we bring in uh, Penar and Higgs here. Well, just help me out, first of all, just the concept of positive versus negative training, uh, uh, reward versus aversion, because I'm sure that must be right uh, up your street as, a, as yes. a, a dog behavioural expert. Yes, I'm a behaviourist with um, 15 years of exper experience of helping problem dogs. Many of those dogs are dogs that I've trained in kind, reward-based methods, not to chase livestock. So it actually is possible. There's no need to use anything as a aversive. So positive punishment is when we use the shock collar to give them a shock, to... In layman's terms, and what we think we're doing is we're telling them not to do something by using the shock. Um... Uh, but actually, what we're doing by using these shock collars is we're creating unstable dogs who are actually more motivated to chase, either through fear or through a desire to up their serotonin, their happy hormone levels again, following pain. Um, and that's even before we get into the arguments about, about pain or moral issues or even those awful people who use collars who you would, for, horrible, for harm, um, as you were talking about, um, or equipment malfunction. But actually, what, what happens is when you zap a dog and you think all right that should tell them not to chase the livestock um they that's there's they're not living they're not doing that in a bubble there's the, the grass there's a fence there's a gate there might be a person in a red jumper walking by and what can happen is that the dog just glances at the person in the red jumper and they think that they either need to avoid the person in the red jumper or attack the person in the red jumper i've worked with dogs who that exactly that has happened so the person was thinking that they were training them not to chase livestock but actually there was a person walking by and as a result they the dog started being aggressive towards people we are by using shock collars we are actually creating unstable dogs and it's much more dangerous it's very dangerous when dogs are highly charged and chasing they're not going to be suddenly sniffing a leaf they either turn into being aggressive or chasing um, and this is what we see and this is what i've seen in my experience of using these of after effects of having other people using the shock collars um i know i've seen you comment about it before jamie on social media you got a dog you're in the countryside the dog runs off for whatever reason it's not on a lead bad owner the, the owners drop the lead for whatever reason a forgivable mistake it charges towards newborn lambs there's a farmer there with a do double barrel shotgun uh, aimed at the pet one might think that if you have an electric shock system, you zap the dog, the dog is immediately brought to heel by the shock, the lamb doesn't get eaten, the dog doesn't get shot, everybody's happy. Is that what you would say, Pen Aaron? If only things were so simple. <laughs> <laughs> we should do Brexit next. <laughs> the, the shock might do the exact opposite to what you expect. If the dog has been trained and used to it, would that not...? Um... Well, then we're... No, absolutely, it might still come back, but then you're left with a dog, probably most likely with behavioural issues, that may or may not be aggressive towards people. So, yes, it might avoid being shot by the farmer, but then it goes off to bite men in red jumps. Um, the dog's running towards lambs. For whatever reason, it's no longer under its owner's control. If it had a shock collar, there's a chance it could be brought back, is there not, before it kills well, the lamb Well, there's a and chance it could there's a chance it could just run further it's a chance it could associate associates this shock collar and the pain with its owner and then doesn't want to go near its owner that's a and, training what issue. and what we're that's seeing with these shock collars is plenty of, sh of shut down dogs absolutely mis they? miserable yeah. dogs where are they? what You're they should be doing what it. they no, should be doing is the kind of plans the kind of training Battersea plans so. that I do dogs are motivated to chase livestock so what we need to do is redirect that instinctive chase onto a toy from puppyhood and that's why respectable puppy schools train toy play from an early age and that's all you need to do you know gone through the process of teaching their dogs they have long they have. and but hard Wendy, even better than that it's because they're lazy we, it's we went they're lazy. through london to no. the doors of the home office no. and we asked that they come out and see the dogs that no. we brought with it's us because and they're lazy would... they can't amazing. be bothered going can, can, through let's just come back to the scenario yeah. Yeah. I, I difficult I, training I'm try, it takes. trying the best I, i'm going to talk about training okay. and poor owners uh, in, in just a little bit okay but the scenario out there you you would advocate presumably that jamie that the sh the shock trait the training aid as, as you like to call them, shock dollars the tabloid journalist in me uh that it, it would stop the dog chasing the, the lamb i invite anybody anybody whatsoever come with me bring a film crew do whatever you want come and watch i'm not going to sit and tell you i'm going to show you okay let's let's talk about uh, <laughs> owners then for a moment um and I, i'm going to come back we'll round off on yeah. evidence because uh it was interesting how many uh dog focused charities didn't want to take part in this debate when they heard you were on it actually jamie which is interesting 
That's the, that's the big problem. That's um, from your point of view. That's the big problem. It is very hard to get a dog to redirect their prey aggression onto toys. It takes a lot of work. Um, but shock collars are not the answer because they lead to shutdown dogs and they lead to very unhappy dogs, which intrinsically makes their, their happy hormones decreased, which makes them more likely to chase in the future. So it's a circle that's going okay. badly wrong. Could I ask, have any of you or any of your colleagues... Would you even consider going to meet Jamie and see him using the training aids in action, just to see? Because one of Jamie's persistent complaints is that the people, the naysayers, make claims which he doesn't feel are backed up. And could, I, could I just yeah, comment on, on that, Matthew? Um, do, just just up to the ladies, because you don't know because I haven't said. I recorded a video offer to um, the major charities who are backing a ban for electronic training aids saying that the next dog that you plan to euthanise please can I have an opportunity to try and work with it and see if I can save its life I was told no I was told no. I didn't mention electronic training collars an assumption was made and because that assumption backed an ideology it was an instant no. That was made in July. How many dogs will have been euthanised in the RSPCA? And you're you're talking about a certain kind of dog. They are the dog that's a, dogs that are deemed com- untrainable. Yeah, the, under, the, the dogs where people say, oh, no, it would be better for it than this, it would be better for it than this. Well, why not let the dog have the opportunity to see? And why not let us just try and see if we can bring that on? And I'll make that offer to you, you know, to anybody. If, if it, That is an offer that I will put to you. You can stand and watch it. You can see the whole process and you can no, decide. I, I have no desire to see a dog being shot. I save dogs' lives every day, and so as yeah. do members of the APBC. David Jay Ryan of the APBC soaks cotton wool buds in lemon juice, concentrated lemon juice, and holds them against the taste receptors of a dog to deter it from chasing livestock by instilling an aversion to the scent of lemon, which he'll then use in a remote spray-activated collar. The APBC are saying What's things... What's the APBC? That they, the Association of Pet Behaviour Counselors are making statements that a published book what? by their former chair goes completely against. Well, Penharon, you should have a right to reply on that, as- um, all APBC members have a code of contact, conduct to use kind reward-based methods yeah. at all times.